Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to be working in my latest altered book. It is a vintage Italian bank book. And last week I made a video, process video, showing how I made the, these layouts from blank page, building them up layer by layer. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make another layout or two. If you like altered books, journal arts, and vintage books and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications. Let's go. At the beginning of the last video, I said something in passing, or I thought it was in passing, about how long it takes to make a video like this process, a uh, video showing how I make a layout. And I mentioned that it uh, takes a couple of days to prepare and then seven, maybe 10, 11 hours to actually film, edit, upload, download, and whatnot on the day I make the video. I thought it was in passing. I thought I was just chit-chatting, but I couldn't believe how many comments I got that said, wait, what? It takes how long? How is that even possible? Well, um, I'm not going to talk about it too much today, although I may do a background video soon, since there seems to be some curiosity about it. I just thought that I would take a moment to show you how long, what I, it took me to prepare just to make this one layout, uh, to wit, gathering the images. Now, I have zillions of times more paper here in the studio than what's on this table. And there's probably about 200 pieces here now. Um, I did not just pick these out of the box at random. I took time and went through the box of ladies and angels and, you know, put them down against the papers to see which ones gave the best resolution, had the best size, the best impact. I went through a ton of black and whites and black and white florals. I'm going to be using a lot of those, but I have a lot of those. So I narrowed it down to about, I don't know, 15 of those. And now I'm going to have to narrow that down even more. Cards, lots of cards. I had to go through the birds. I have a box just of birds, and I've got some ideas here. Oh, and, and an armadillo. The box of flowers. All of those had to be gone through and winnowed and tried out and auditioned. So this is just the first round of the audition. Now, before I actually start the video, I'm probably going to spend another hour auditioning the auditionees to see which eight pieces are going to go in today's video, where I then will start the process of saying, this is where this goes, this is what I used, and this is what I didn't use, and why. I just thought I would show you first what it takes to get to that stage, where it looks like I'm just beginning. All right, let's just begin. This layout is probably going to be just very black and white or grayscale. And I'm going to start by anchoring this corner with this black and white flower image. I, I do like to do that. If you've seen my pages, you know that I often anchor one or both of the corners with some paper that's torn on the diagonal. It just sets the tone for the whole layout. Now, this is really beautiful. It's from the girl's own paper, which was uh, a magazine that I have uh, quite a few copies of from the 1880s. But here's the deal. If you don't have a black and white photo from the 1880s, you don't need one. Let me show you how 
this technique will work with pieces that you almost certainly have access to no matter where you live. The first thing I want to show you is how it looks with just some text. This is from an old dictionary and I rough tore it diagonally. And now if I was to put this down here, okay, maybe it's not as sexy as the big passion fruit flower, but it would still set a nice tone and feel for this part of the layout. You could use a map. This is from a vintage atlas. I say vintage, it's from the 1970s. Reader's Digest atlases. You can find these in thrift stores and um, do so much with them. They don't cost much. So if I was to put that down here, it's quite different than the black and white text, but it's very dramatic. It's anchoring this corner. It's setting the tone for the layout. And while I'm not using it today, I am thinking that I might use it in a subsequent layout because if you remember from last week, I'm trying to alternate between black and white layouts and layouts that have some color and especially pick up this dusty teal color, which that does. And again, you can see that it's going to add some contrast and interest and layer. Now here's one using some sheet music. And this is just inexpensive sheet music I got at the library book sale for a pound. And that looks really good. It's just because you've got that, that black and white and black and white. And what I'm thinking is after I tore this, I had this piece left over. I think if I do go with some sheet music, I'm going to go corner, corner. And then when I start adding something to that, it's going to have a lot of layer and interest. Uh, before I go further, I want to point out that these do have uh, rounded corners up here. I have a proper corner punch and I uh, can rarely find it. And when I can, it's sticky and it makes my wrist hurt. So you know what? I almost always round my corners just using some scissors. And so now if I was to glue that down, I would have a lot of the work of the layout done for me right there. Now you can see how this anchors the page and adds some contrast. What about this? Well, I've got ideas and I have cards, lots of cards. This is a holy card from uh, the 1900s. It's like a copper plate engraving. And um, I like that. I do like that. But it's not really telling a story. It's just two incongruent, cool images. Nothing wrong with that. So let's add that little tin type guy. Okay, it's interesting, but it's not the page. Uh, see, I have this card here. It actually, I was looking at two cards, this one and this one. Now this is a nice size and leaves some of that uh, stamping showing, but this is actually closer in uh, tone to the yellowed pages here. And then you've got the black stamp and the black ink picking up that, that color, that the black stamping. So I really like this bird because he's facing this way, but his gaze is going this way, which makes your eye go back into the center of the page. There aren't many images that, um, where you can have it both ways. And that's, I don't know. I, he's not the one. Now this is another black and white bird from a coffee table book. 
And I actually like this one a lot. He's tending to fill up this space down here nicely. And again, the gaze is going up, uh, maybe to something delicious to eat in these flowers. Let's see. So that's a definite possibility. I have a smaller bird also going with the black and white and also with his gaze going into the flowers. And I like a lot of big stuff, but I've already got big flowers, so I might go with the smaller bird. Or there's an armadillo. I really like this armadillo, but um, his scales are so uh, fiddly that he's going to need uh, a calmer background or else it's all going to camouflage. I also have, let's see, thought about them. I had that haircut. I have had her in the box for a long, long time because this is a special image and I want it to go somewhere great. It's also big, so it makes sense to use it in a bigger altered book. But she's very dramatic, and again, she's facing this way, but her gaze is going this way, so you've got it both ways. That's, that's very strong. Here's another lady. Uh, again, she'd be better if it was a little bit bigger, but we can trim that. Let's see. And her gaze is going off the page as if she is, <laughs> I don't know, she's looking at something that's going on that shouldn't be. That's that's all I got. I like that, and I like how that tone is going to really blend into the text here. Although I also had this lady, and she's from a book of Tudor Queens, and uh, very tempted by that. She, I'm almost sure, will be showing up at some layout coming soon in this book. After all that, I found this in the bottom of a pile, and I'm going to give this a try. It's an old arch, a uh, church arch, and I printed it up. Uh, I do have these, uh, a whole lot of church arches and ruins their printables and they're on Etsy. I will link to that below. And I printed it on tissue paper. So now when I glue that down, it's going to go translucent and anything that's underneath is going to want to show through that archway. And let's see what happens with that. I decided to top that off with this bird. Is that a crow? I, anyway, he's giving me some Edgar Allan Poe vibes, which go with the, the arch, which is now a little bit whimsical because of the stamps, and that takes away a little of the creepiness. And um, so I'm just going to put him there. And so we've got some passion flowers and some arches and uh, church ruins and Poe, and that's all I got. I'm going to glue it down. Finally, there's this space down here. I thought about a postage stamp because it's I've got some with the birds on them. And stamps are super inexpensive. You can get them on eBay or whatnot. They cost very little and they are decorative and they fill up that little space so well. And I do like that. I also have a little butterfly, which lets some of that stamping show through and does suit the the delicious dinner and flower idea. I found this in a box of scraps, and it's from the, the spine of an old 
encyclopedia. And uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking if I glue that down, there's something about it that suits that that kind of Poe feeling, this this old ins this old book. It feels good. I'm gonna glue that down. I do love me some mixed media kismet, because after I finished this layout, I am not even kidding. I was going through a box that I have not sorted, looking for images that were this size and whatnot, and I found this. Postage stamps of Edgar Allan Poe. Well, I can't not use it. Uh, the, what would the paper gods do to me if I just ignored that? It looks really good there because that frames him very well. And then you've got a book and he's an author. But um, I really feel that this page needs a top note in this corner. So... I am thinking that he's going to go there and set that off. I want to alternate between black and white layouts and color layouts in this, this book. And so I'm going to try a color layout on this page. When you have um, a background that is this busy, that has this much going on, this much drama, there's one of two things that you can do with your layout. You can make it really simple. Simplify your layout so that there's contrast and it's easy to see. Or double down. Double down on the messiness and see what happens. They're both right. So that's what I'm going to try to do here with this page of wildflowers. I'm going to rough tear a diagonal border that goes from here to here that will pull the page from page page into one layout. It will add some prettiness and color and these colors also pick up the hydrangea purple colors here. So even though it's pages away, it will draw the eye uh, as, a th 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 as a theme, a color theme. I have these uh, wildflower pages. I have some like them on my website as free printables. So if you would like to use some wildflower pages similar to this, there's a link below the video. Go get them. I am not sure how this is going to work. I am just going to tear, as I said, just tear diagonally. and put it down and see how it looks. Guess what? I don't like it. Or I do, but I don't like it today. I, I don't like it here. Uh, I had already planned on using this angel from a coffee table book. Here in this corner, and only after I tore this, trying to get some plum uh, messiness going, did I realize that he's going to be covering up quite a bit of that. Um, and that's a shame. So this is beautiful, but it's not going to work today. But, and I'm showing that you this because I want you to know sometimes you get there uh, by a weird route. When I tore this out, tear, 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 I was left with the two corners on either side. And hey, presto, that does work. It's messy. It's got that muted color that picks up the color in the previous layout. And this guy is not taking up valuable real estate down here on the flowers. And I like where this is going. Now I just need to put that down and add something on this side. I will save the strips for a different layout.
For two days, I have been sure that this bird would be the image that I use on this side of the layout. I like the, the posture, the diagonalness. I like the muted teal colors that pick up the teal in the cover. And now that I'm looking at it, I, it's just not the one. So I wanted to look at a couple of other options and before I glue this guy down, because this is a darn good bird and I don't want to glue him into the place that is not perfect for him. So I thought about, like I said, this is, uh, I doubled down into the busyness, but maybe now I could simplify this side just a little bit. So I got out my box of holy cards and I do sell holy cards in the ephemera boxes that I sell, but you will not be surprised to hear that I keep a bunch for myself and I tend to keep the ones with flowers. I really like those. So I got out my stash and I was going through them card by card, flower by flower. And when I got to this one, everything just stopped. And I wasn't sure why. And it's very subtle because I realized that, uh, again, these colors have the muted teal colors. And of course it complements the angel. I love these thistles. And without even meaning to, I realized that the stem of the thistles meets up with the, some of the foliage that I put down on that diagonal piece. And again, that is good enough for me because it seems like it was meant to be. And I'm going to glue that down and be right back. I am really liking this because now that I can see it, it almost feels like a whimsical illuminated manuscript where instead of, say, St. Francis preaching to the birds, you have this uh, waggy finger angel who is speaking to or perhaps even listening to these thistles. And that is a story I would like to know more about. I'm going to stop here. I will probably add some embellishment and color in a video to come, but this one's long enough. So I'm going to stop and say that if you would like to find these free printables, please check out the text box below the video. You will there also find information about my online classes, including how to alter a board book. Please let me know if you have any feedback or questions in the comments and we can compare notes. Join me next week. I'm going to have a new illustrated journal flip through and then next weekend I'm going to finish this book up probably in two parts. So please stay tuned. Until then, get up and go make something.